sometimes when you're building your projects, you don't want code necessarily to exist in a release build. You maybe only want it to exist in the development environment. So in other words, in a debug build. So in order to do that, it's actually very simple in Android Studio. You can create two separate builds, one for when the app is released to the App Store and one for when the app is in your development environment on your local machine. And um, the reason why I'm actually bringing this up is because in the previous video uh, of this, this is a course, by the way, a full length course on UI testing for beginners. Um, in the previous video, I showed you how to use something called an espresso idling resource to test uh, background tasks uh, using espresso. And we had to actually add some of the test code into our production code. So this is obviously not ideal because you don't want code sitting in your production environment that is running that isn't doing anything, which is exactly what it would be doing. So you can see right here, I'm calling the Espresso Island resource, incrementing it and de-incrementing it in our production environment. So we want to actually, we want to remove this from, or not remove it, we want to basically mock out a debug version and a release version so that when the app gets released to the app store, this code does nothing and it doesn't occupy any unnecessary resources. So this is actually really simple. All you got to do is, so I'm going to go into, make sure you have the project view selected up here. Uh, we can go into right click on source, go to new directory. This is going to be called, uh, you can call the first one release. So now inside of release, oh, actually, so if you want to do release first, you need to make sure you have the correct build variant selected. So if you go in the left hand menu here, you should have build variants, make sure to select release. And now we are going to work, work on this release folder. So now right click on release, go to new folder down here and go to new Java folder. So then, then just click finish. That's going to generate a new Java folder inside of release. Now you need to make sure you have the correct variant selected when you create the Java folder, otherwise it won't do anything. So I'll just show you what I mean. If I right click on source, go to new directory and type debug. Uh, now, if I try to create a Java folder in here, it's not going to work correctly. So if I go new Java folder, finish, if I look inside debug, notice that that Java folder is not highlighted, meaning that it's not active. So right now I have the release uh, variant selected. So this is blue. You can see that it's active. If I was to go over to debug, then that one gets highlighted. So that means that that's the one that's going to be used uh, for when you, when, if you were to run this project. So um, let's go back to, so let's go back to release. We'll work on that one first. Now inside of here, you basically want to copy the exact package structure for your main package directory. So if I go into main, notice I have Java, com, coding with Mitch, espresso, UI test examples, and then we have our, our, all of our different packages here. So the class that we want to add to a debug build and a release build is inside of util. It's this espresso idling resource. So again, basically what we want to do here is we want to mock out a version for debugging and we want to mock out a version for release. So I'm going to copy this package structure first of all. So right clicking on the Java folder inside of release, go to new package and it's going to be com uh, coding with Mitch. And this is UI uh, or it's a, is it espresso, espresso UI test examples. Make sure to not make a spe uh, spelling mistake. And then we need the util package. So just copying that that uh, package structure exactly. Now I'm going to go to the espresso idling resource. I'm going to press control X to cut that. And I'm going to paste it into the util here and go to refactor. So now it's removed from the main package directory. You can see it, it no longer exists up here. And if I go into util in release, it's now inside of here. So, um, so for the, for, for the release version, we actually, what, what we basically want to do is we want to comment out anything that does anything. So inside of the release version, we have a class that basically just does nothing. It has two functions, increment and de-increment because those are used in production. They're being called right here in production, but we don't want them to do anything. We don't want them to tie up any resources because it's not necessary. So as you probably guessed, the debug version is going to be completely different. So let's, let's, uh, I'll leave these comments in for now because we are going to need that in the debug build. So I'm going to swap over to the debug build variant now, and I'm going to go into the release folder and I'm going to copy. So I'm pressing control C on com here because I'm going to copy this entire structure here. So copying on, on com. Now I'm going to go up to the debug build and paste that in and just click OK. So no, I don't want to add that to Git. So now I have the same package structure, com, coding with Mitch, espresso UI test examples, util, and then we have the espresso idling resource. So now I want to uncomment these for the debug build because we do need these. These are going to be used for debugging. Now I'm going to go back into the release version and I'm just going to clean up, clean this up and get rid of these comments. 
So now we have two different uh, different uh, versions. We have the one for debug, which contains the, the code that we actually need to use the Espresso idling resource. And then down below, we have the one for the release build, which does absolutely nothing. So then either way though, if you look in the production code, if you have the release build selected, it's gonna do nothing. If you have the debug build, it's going to actually use those two different codes or two different, um, uh, use that, uh, the correct one. So now just to test to make sure that everything's working, I'm gonna go up to, into Android test and I'm going to select one of our tests just to run it and see if it's working correctly. So go to movie list fragments, I'm gonna right click here, go to run, and let's just make sure that all of our tests are still passing like they should be. Test number one, green check mark. Test number two, green check mark. Test number three, green check mark. Test number four should be green. It would have failed by now if it was gonna fail. And then the last one should also be green. So that we have all of our tests passing. We have a debug build and we have a release build um, just to make sure that you don't type any resources that are not necessary. So again, as a reminder, for those of you who are watching this video and have not watched the, watched the rest of the course, this video is part of a full length course on my website. You just go to codingwithmitch.com, go to courses here and click on UI testing for beginners. Uh, teaches you how all, all the how to get started basically for writing your first UI test with Espresso Android X test and a bunch of other stuff. You can take a look at all of the kind of uh, subjects that we cover down here. So it's completely free. Just register on my website. It takes 30 seconds. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.